All right, so we are back with another video. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to install Mongoose and we're going to set up a user schema. And basically what that is, it's just going to represent how our users are going to look like in our application. So we're going to have to define like, you know, fields like the Discord ID, uh, you know, username or password if we had any, right? So basically just a way to kind of like, uh, you know, model our, our, our users. And then we're going to have to create the user if the user does not exist. And we'll just return the user if the user uh, does in fact uh, exist. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and install Mongoose. So you are an add Mongoose and make sure you have MongoDB installed. If you don't have MongoDB installed, make sure you install it. There's plenty of tutorials out there. Just, you know, look one up on YouTube and it's very easy to install. Also optional, but you don't have to. I would highly recommend you install MongoDB Compass, very easy tool to use to view your data. Uh, okay, I personally enjoy using it a lot whenever I use MongoDB. All right, so let's go ahead. And now that we have uh, set up Mongoose, okay. Uh, well, first we'll need to establish a connection to the database. So I'll actually create a new folder, call it database. Okay, and I'll create a new file called index.ts. We're going to go ahead and import mongoose from mongoose, just like this. And I'm just going to call mongoose.connect. And we're going to have to pass in the URI. So this is just going to look like mongodb. Okay. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Colon, forward slash, forward slash. Okay. And what we're going to do next is we're going to pass in the uh, host name of our database. Okay, now if you if your database has authentication, uh, I think you would actually pass in the uh, username and password in the beginning, so it looks something like this. So I actually pull up the documentation for you. So just basically pass in your username and password like this. So username colon password at the very beginning, without the square brackets, and then at host. Okay, so our database for for my MongoDB database, I don't have any authentication. So I'm not going to specify username and password. Okay. So I'll just do localhost. And then uh, you can specify the port 27017, which is the default port. But I can just omit that. So this will imply that it's going to use the default port. And then I could just uh, put in the default database. So I'm just going to call this next Discord uh, dashboard, I guess. Uh, not the best name. Uh, actually, you know, I'll just call this Discord dashboard. I don't want to make this too complicated. Okay, and that'll be it. So let me just call dot then. So if the database connection succeeded, we'll just say connected to database. And then if it errors out, we'll just catch the error. And then we'll just log it. Okay, uh, cool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to import this file. So I should be able to actually just import this. Uh, I think maybe importing this inside the create app would be okay. Um, but I think actually, no, I'm going to import this inside uh, the index.ts file. So let's import the database file and let's take a look at our logs. Just to make sure that everything's okay. We want to see that, whoops, dev, not darv, dev. We want to see that connected to DB. There we go. Perfect. So it actually connected successfully. So great. That'll be, uh, that's, that's going to be just fine. Um, okay, cool. All right. So now that we have successfully connected to the database with no issues, uh, what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to go back into this database folder. I'll create a new folder and I'll call this schemas because this is where I'm going to create all of my schemas. So I'll create a schema called user.ts. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to import mongoose from mongoose. Actually, I'm going to import, uh, yeah, I'll import mongoose. I was going to import the schema, uh, the schema class itself. But you can do both. But uh, what's most important is we just need to create an instance of schema. So const user schema equals new schema. Or you can just do new mongoose dot schema. And then inside here, we're going to define our schema. 
So all of the fields that we want our users to have. So for example, the Discord ID, we'll define that here. And we'll set the type. We're going to use Mongoose's schema types. Okay, so mongoose.schema type dot schema types dot string. Okay, so the Discord ID is going to be a string, and this is going to be required. And we're going to set the value of this to be true, the unique to be true. So in case if we try to create a new user that uh, will increase try to create a new record with the same Discord ID, it's going to throw an error. Okay, because you definitely don't want duplicates in your database when it comes to users, for example. All right, cool. So we have the Discord ID. Uh, we'll also save the access token as well. Uh, let's do that. So let me just save that. And required will be true. And then the refresh token. Okay. Uh, what else will we need? You could save the email if you want to. Uh, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, I personally would not save things that can change over time or can go stale. For example, the guilds that the user's in, you don't want to save that because that could go stale. It's better to fetch the API. You definitely don't want to save the, the user's username or the discriminator because the only way that you'll be able to get the latest details is if you manually fetch the REST API or if the user re-authenticates again uh, and you definitely won't know when they'll do that. Okay. And also another thing to mention is that make sure you encrypt the access and the refresh token. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and export. Uh, let's see, we're going to export mongoose.model. Okay. So this is where we're going to compile our schema into an actual model. And we're going to call this user users. And then for the schema, we'll pass in user schema, just like that. Okay. Uh, cool. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty much it with our schema. So now, if I were to actually, uh, let me just check the logs again just to make sure everything's okay. I always want to check the logs. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So we're connected to our database. We have our schema. Uh, perfect. All right, so now let's go ahead and go inside the strategies file, discord.ts, and let's go ahead and write some code. So what we're going to do is if, oh, first we're going to have to search for the user. Okay, so first let's bring in the user model from our database slash schemas. And uh, I'll actually create a barrel file for this. Uh, let me create an index.ts file, import user from user, and then export user. All right. I think I might also, I wonder if I could just do this. Yeah, no, we'll just, we'll just do this. We'll have more schemas. We might have more schemas later, so I'll just do it like this for now. Okay, and uh, let's see what's going on here. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. So now let's go ahead and search for the user. So let's go ahead and uh, create a variable. Let's call this const uh, existing user. Whoops. Equals await user dot find one. And we're going to search based off of their uh, their Discord ID. Now, the thing with find one is that uh, this is actually generic, I think. So you can actually just pass in user like this. Or actually not here, sorry. Let me actually do this because I want, I want uh, IntelliSense. So let me go back to the model. And uh, you don't have to do this, completely optional, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and whatever fields I have here, I'm just going to put this up here. So Discord ID is a string, access token is a string, and then refresh token is a string. And this schema is actually uh, generic. So we can actually pass in a, uh, a type here. And so now if I go, if I go ahead and call find one, you're going to see that Intel still actually pick it up as a user. Okay. And this is going to give us IntelliSense. Okay, it'll give us a uh, type pins as well. So for example, right now I can I can actually pass in Discord ID, and it'll pop up in IntelliSense. Okay, and that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in the Discord ID. I'm going to get the Discord ID first. So the ID we can get that from the profile 
dot id property okay but i'm just going to destructure it and then rename it as discord id so i can just pass it in right over here now instead of actually using this find one method we're actually going to use find one and update and the reason why is because remember we are saving the axis and the refresh token and those values could actually go stale at some point right they could also become invalidated so uh the and plus the user might actually also uh get a new set of access and refresh tokens so let's say for example if they uh if they deauthorize the application and then decide to reauthorize again it's going to generate a new set of access and refresh tokens if the access token or the refresh token uh, has expired it'll give them a new one okay so we're going to change it from find one to find one and update and we're going to first pass in the filter so we want to get the user by their discord id and then the second parameter we're going to pass in the parameters that we want to update so it's just going to be access token and refresh token okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pass in a third parameter which is just the options and we're going to set this new property to true and what this will do is it'll actually give back the updated value okay so if the user was found it'll update the user and then give back the updated value if we if you don't have this it's not going to give you the the updated value it'll just update it now one thing that we should also do um is uh, we should also check to see if this is truthy or not so if the user is not found in the database this existing user value will be null so if so we'll do is this so if existing user then we'll just return done pass in null existing user just like that okay because we already updated it however if it's null then that means we have to go ahead and create a new user so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and create a new variable i'll call this new user equals and then i can either use user.create or i can just do new user like this both work the same way okay or not the same way but it'll achieve the same thing but i'll just uh, invoke the user's constructor okay and i'll pass in an object and all the fields that i want to actually save to the database so that includes discord id the access and the refresh token okay so we then need to actually save the user so const saved user equals await user or not user new user dot save so this will actually save this into the database collection okay and then we'll go ahead and return done pass in null for the error because there's no error uh and then we'll pass in saved user okay now before we do anything else let's also wrap this in a try catch so we can handle the error just in case and we'll console log that though i think uh even if we did wrap this in a try catch i think there's already like an error handler somewhere I'm not too entirely sure but let's just do this just to be safe okay so what we're going to do is we're going to return done pass in error and then for the user we'll pass in undefined now this is quite annoying because it's saying type of unknown is not assignable to type error null or undefined so i'll just pass this as any for now okay so right now we don't have any users in our database in our collection so let's go ahead and change that so let's go to slash api slash auth slash discord okay uh let's go ahead and click authorize and we're going to get an error and that's totally a fine okay don't worry about that for now let's pay attention to our database if i refresh you're going to see i have the access token as well as the refresh token and the discord id so we're creating a user just fine okay now let's go ahead and do this let me go back to here hopefully this will actually work okay cool so before i do that let me go into my discord account let me go into settings and let me go over to authorize apps and let me just deauthorize this app okay because when you deauthorize it and if you reauthorize again it's going to go ahead and generate a new pair of access and refresh tokens 
So let's click authorize. Okay, don't worry about the error. This is totally fine because we have not implemented the serialize and deserialize user functions. But if I refresh, you're going to see that the access and the refresh token are updated, which proves that our update is working. Okay, now let me do one more thing. Let me just console log existing user. Okay, and then uh, what I want to do is I just want to show you that it actually does get in fact updated and it will be serialized. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just repeat this step again. So let's just go ahead and deauthorize the app and let's reauthorize. Okay, if I refresh the database, it gets updated. If I look in the console, you can see that the new value is returned. And the reason why is because we have new set to true. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, just make sure you have this enabled um, and then you'll be fine. Okay, uh, so let's see what's next. What's next is we'll need to actually implement the serialize and deserialize user functions, but we'll do that in the next episode because we've done quite a lot. Okay, we know that it's creating the user and we know that it's updating the user whenever it needs to. Okay, in the next episode, we'll implement the serialize and deserialize user functions and that's just going to take care of serializing the user to the session. And whenever we make requests to our endpoint, it's going to go ahead and take the session ID, deserialize that so we can get the original user back and we'll know who the authenticated user is in our application. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.